In this video, i like to show you how you can automate the process of creating a cluster on GCP. And we're going to use the command line tool gcloud to do that because it's super important for you to understand how you can run Spark jobs on a cluster instead of just using your local, local computer or, uh, or just one uh, virtual machine. Because let's say Spark can work very well, of course, uh, with uh, a single virtual machine if you have a lot of cores. And of course, it performs better the more cores you have. But that is scaling up only vertically. What you want to do to actually leverage Spark at its full potential is to be able to scale horizontally. So adding more VMs so that you can, uh, you can run those heavy jobs a little bit faster, okay? So this is the, the power of Spark because you, because you can run those jobs on, on multiple machines at the same time. And in this tutorial, I'd like to show you how we can automate the process of creating a cluster because you don't want to have that cluster running all the time, okay? You want to create the cluster automatically and then run your Spark job and then uh, delete it fast as well because you don't want to spend all that money on, on too many VMs running all the time when they don't actually do anything. So in this video, we're going to go through first how to install gcloud so you can actually use the command line tool uh, from Google. And then we're going to create a bucket because we're going to want to store an, uh, an install file on that bucket so that we can use it later whenever we create uh, clusters. In that file, we'll have some uh, packages that we want to install on every node. Okay, and then we're going to actually create the cluster using uh, different arguments that I'm going to explain uh, later on. But before I start, I just want to thank you guys for subscribing to our channel and for liking our videos. And we really want to help you guys grow in the data science and machine learning space. All right. So if you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe. And now let's continue on with the tutorial. Now that we know that we need to install uh, gcloud, we can actually go to this address and this is the documentation. We can just go through the quick start and we can see how we can get started with cloud SDK. I already have this installed, so I'm not going to go through all of the steps, but it's very, very easy. You have to first download the following either on Mac OS 64-bit uh, or Mac OS 32-bit, and then you have to install it. And once you get that, you can just initialize it and then you have to uh, log in, of course. You're going to be prompted to log in to, to Google. And all of the rest is pretty much straightforward, OK? Make sure that you do that so that you have gcloud installed. So now what we can do is check if we have gcloud set up. So let's see the project that we're working on. So you see we are working in this project. Let's actually go to uh, GCP the console. So we see we are in project API project. This is just the default name. And now that we have uh, gcloud set up and we see that we can uh, run things with uh, the command line tool, let's go ahead and create a bucket first. Since we don't have a bucket, we can just create a bucket. And for naming uh, purposes, Let's look at our project to see the actual name. We can actually grab this and name the bucket exactly as our, uh, our project because therefore we know that this name is unique. You want to give it a unique name. Okay, now we can continue. We're going to have, it's just gonna be a regional one. I think it's, uh, we don't want to spend too much money on that as well. So let's go ahead and choose. I'm going to choose Europe because I'm in London, so I can choose Europe West. I want to have it available here. And we can click on continue. I think the best one is to actually have a standard default storage class because we're going to access this, uh, this storage frequently. Of course, you can have near line or cold line, but I recommend that you use the standard uh, default storage class. You can continue and then access control and everything else we're going to live in the same way okay so let's go ahead and create 
So now we have our bucket. Now that we have all of these things set up, before we want to create the cluster, we want to have an install uh, bash script so that we can install any sort of package or software that we want on all of our nodes, okay? Because of course, uh, these clusters come in pre-installed with some software, but we might want other things, for example, some Python packages like pipm or pip or, uh, or anything like that to be installed on all the nodes. Let's, uh, let's see how we can do that. So you see here, we list all of the commands that we want to be ran when we uh, create uh, that cluster. So for this reason, here we're going to just install pipenv. I like to use pipenv as a package management and a virtual environment tool. But uh, you can here you can just add whatever software you want. This is the file. Now what we're going to need to do next, we're going to need to upload this file to our bucket. And as you can see here, all of the things that we're doing, we're going to get the project name by default, the one that we saw earlier, okay? If we run this command again, we can see again what it does. It just grabs the API project, the project that we're currently working on. Of course, you can switch between projects that you have on GCP, but here we're just gonna use this project. So the next thing, we have the bucket, and as you can see, uh, we need to pass in the, the bucket name when we decide to upload uh, the install script. And of course, we have our upload install with the gsutil command, and we're going to copy our install um, bash script to the install location. And this is all there is to it. So let's actually do this. And you can see, if I don't pass in the bucket name, uh, it throws me the error, of course, because it needs an argument. So we can just grab the bucket name from here. And see, it, com it uh, copied our file to our bucket. So we can refresh this now. And as you can see, we have our install file uh, copied in our bucket. Now, the final thing that we need to do is actually create the cluster, all right? So let's check out this file as well. That is, uh, that will help you guys create this automatically. Now this file also includes the copy file because you don't want to, to run too many files. The upload, I just wanted to show you guys how you can upload uh, to the bucket by, by itself, but our create cluster file actually includes the file upload to, uh, to GCP, okay? And here you can see that the way we can create a cluster is pretty straightforward. We have this command, gcloud beta data pro clusters create, and then we pass in a number of arguments. And let's go through these arguments. First, we have the number of workers. We're going to specify two by default, this is pretty straightforward. And then of course we have to specify worker machine type and then the master machine type, all right? I mean, you're familiar with what workers are and what master is. So I'm not going to go through the explanations of what they mean, but we need to see how we can choose the perfect machine type for our problem, all right? And also for this specific example, we don't want to have a very expensive cluster, all right? So what we can do, we can check Google's pricing calculator. So let's check out our data proc. Let's see, we want to create a cluster. We don't, we don't necessarily need to give it a name. And then let's see how much it would cost us to have the smallest standard machine for a master node. And for the worker nodes, we're gonna use the, the smallest as well, okay? And then we're going to have here two because we're going to have two worker nodes. And then let's say that we want to run it for just one hour, just one hour because theoretically the jobs that you will run won't last more than an hour, like a normal small job. And of course the storage, let's give it just 100 gig. 
and then let's see how it costs. Let's create an estimate for that. So our total estimate cost is zero point seventeen dollars. So this is extremely cheap for just running a Spark job for an hour with the smallest uh, machine type as well. Of course, if we would want to increase, let's uh, see what we get. Let's increase it to a machine that has two CPUs and uh, 7.5 uh, RAM. And of course, we're going to use the same setup. And if we add this, it's going to be double. All right. So depending on the job, of course, here you can use crazy machines. You can have like 96 cores and 360 gig for a for a machine and that's that, that that's pretty pretty awesome right but again that would cost you quite a bit just so we see let's see how much it will cost us to actually have this standard okay with two worker nodes for an hour just with the same setup <laughs> so it goes from 0.17 dollars to 17 dollars that is crazy all right so i don't think you will actually need to use such powerful machines so yeah but it's good to play around with this pricing calculator so you know exactly up ahead how much it will cost you to run your spark jobs this is extremely helpful so for anything that you want to do on gcp the fact that you have this pricing calculator makes it really really worth it and definitely is going to save you money in the long term now let's go back to our uh, to our file and now that we have our machine type set up, of course, we're using N1 standard one, which is the smallest type. Now we can see the image versions. OK, so let's see what these image versions are. You can create a data proc clusters using a data proc image. So if we look here, we have different types of images that we can use. And here I'm using the 1.5 Ubuntu 18. If we click here, we can check to see what components we have pre-installed on our um, on our cluster. You see Anaconda is optional, so it's not it doesn't come pre-installed. But what do we what we have pre-installed is Spark. We have Python, of course, we have R, we have Scala. So it's very, very good because we, we already have a lot of software pre-installed. All right. But of course, uh, we are going to need to add Anaconda and we're going to need to add Jupyter as well, for example, for our uh, uh, demo, just so that you see how you can add these components. Let's go back here so we can see we have to enable the component gateway as an argument and then we have to pass in the optional components and we're going to pass in Anaconda and Jupyter. And that's all you need to do in order to have Anaconda and Jupyter pre-installed on your clusters. OK. And of course, we have to pass in the zone. The zone will be the second uh, argument that we're going to have to pass into our create cluster uh, script. OK, so compared to our previous script that we were just uploading to a bucket, here we have to pass in both the bucket name and the zone as arguments. And now we have also the initialization actions and we just pass in the install, all right, which is the script that we want to have initiated when we create these clusters. And you just have to pass in the name and that's all you have to do to create the cluster. So now all we have to do is just run this script and the cluster will be created. We have to pass in our bucket details and of course the zone. I'm going to pass in OK, so we have to pass in a region. And let's pass in region as well to our um, OK. So our region as an argument. And then let's modify here as well. So we have region. and zone. So what we're going to do, we're going to change this to three and region equals. So now we have 
we have to pass in the region, the zone, and that's it. Yeah. So what we can do now is just simply run this again. West to C for the zone. All right. Let's run this again. So as you can see now the cluster is created. We have the region set up. I completely forgot about the region. Sorry for that. You can find the regions and zones here for everything that you need. Like um, these are the zones. So you have to pass in the region and then you have to pass in the zone. All right, A, B or C. So for example, for Europe, this is the region, Europe West 1 or Europe West 2, for example, for London, Europe West 2. And then for the zone, you can pass in A, B or C. I passed in C, but again, you can choose the region and zone that you desire. Here, we just forgot to pass in the region, but that's the whole point of, of this exercise. You need to have a, a structured manner in which you can create these clusters and then you can pass in as many arguments as you want and as you need, of course, as you, as you saw here. But the, the, the most important aspect here is that you have the tools now to uh, create a cluster with specific configurations that you desire. So you see, this is our master and these are the workers. All right, so we created one master and two workers. And now that you have these clusters created, you run your job and then you can easily uh, delete the clusters by running this command. You can just uh, specify delete and the cluster name. So now that you have the tools that you need in order to create a cluster whenever you have a Spark job that you want to run and then you can delete the cluster when you're finished. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.